Recently, we did a video on the benefits of photobiomodulation on the body, also known as infrared light therapy. There's a, a tremendous amount of research that shows infrared therapy can reverse peripheral neuropathy, heal traumatic brain injuries, heal injured muscles and joints, accelerate the healing of fractured bones, and even heal injured discs. It can also accelerate wound healing, including burns. As great as this technology is, there's still some inherent challenges to healing nerves with infrared light therapy. The most significant one being that most of the devices on the market are complete junk and won't work. This leads to frustration, wasted time and energy. Now, a second challenge is even if you do buy a good unit, if you don't know how to properly use it to stimulate nerve repair and regeneration, you may not get the results you had hoped for. So today, I'm gonna to answer the five most common questions we get when it comes to using photobiomodulation. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be good. Hello, Health Explorer. This is Dr. Coppola, the Nerve Doctor. If you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when I publish new content. So if you've watched my previous video, Healing Nerves with Light, you may recall me saying that nerves heal extremely slow at a rate of one inch per month and that photobiomodulation, or PBM for short, can accelerate nerve repair up to four inches per month, which is rather remarkable. Then in our video, How to Avoid Buying Infrared Junk, we listed the five most important features for a good device. If you haven't seen this video, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now, one of the features I mentioned was that a good PBM device must have what is called pulsed light. So here's a common question I get. How do I know if my device has pulsed light? Now, this is an excellent question because you won't be able to tell if your unit has pulsed light simply by looking at it. In fact, the light will appear to stay on continuously. Here's why. A good quality PBM device, certainly the ones we prescribe, will pulse anywhere from 73 times per second, otherwise known as 73 hertz, up to 49,000 times per second, which is rather incredible. So when the light is pulsating that quickly, it will appear to be continuous light. The only way you can determine if it's pulsating or not is by contacting the manufacturer. Now, the reason this feature is so important is that without pulsed light, the nerves acclimate to the stimuli and they will stop responding. In other words, they simply won't heal. Let me give you an example. Think of when there's a continual monotone sound in the background, like the sound of a fan, or maybe softly playing elevator music. Eventually, it becomes white noise, and you don't even notice it's there. However, if that same sound was to turn on and off consistently, and subtly crescendo into notes and of instruments, it would grab your attention. Pulse light is a symphony of music for your nerve cells where the notes rise and fall in crescendo. This ever-changing cadence makes your nerves stand up and take notice. This symphony keeps your nerves engaged and active, which is what is needed to achieve nerve repair and regeneration. Now for FAQ number two, why do my nerves feel worse after treatment? Most people tolerate PBM without any side effects. However, there's a small percentage of the people who may actually feel worse after treatment. This occurs when there is damage to the mitochondria of the nerve cells resulting in dysfunction. Each nerve cell contains up to 2 million mitochondria. The mitochondria are the engines and the energy factories within our nerve cells. When these mitochondria within the cells are damaged and they get stimulated by PBM, it causes abnormal firing of the nerves because the mitochondria are not working properly. So it's not that the light therapy is bad, rather it's that we need to strengthen and repair the mitochondria so your body can heal properly. In cases like this, we always start these patients off very slowly with their PBM treatment, and we limit it to only five minutes per treatments, three to four times per week. Then we slowly increase the treatment times. 
This will prevent overstimulation of the dysfunctional mitochondria. At the same time, we start them on a very specific nutritional po protocol in addition to Neuphoria Gold and Blue to upregulate and improve mitochondrial function. Now, on to FAQ number three. How do I know if my unit's working? Most PPM devices, even the good ones, have a combination of red and infrared lights on the unit, with two-thirds or more of the diodes being comprised of near-infrared light diodes. The wavelength of the infrared light falls within the invisible spectrum of light, meaning you can't see infrared light with the naked eye. Now, if you take it into a room that's completely blacked out, you'll see a faint glow in red color. This spectrum is what allows for deep penetration and stimulation of nerve cells. The red diodes are used to stimulate the cells on the surface of the skin. In sensory neuropathy, the skin cells can be deprived of circulation and vital nutrients, causing the skin to die and result in a, in a purplish black looking skin that flakes and resembles alligator skin. It will also feel like the skin is being pulled extremely tight. Now, getting back to the original question, how do you know if the unit's working? Well, you're going to see red lights interspersed between diodes that look like they're not working, but they are. Remember, infrared light is invisible to the naked eye. As far as what should you feel, well, some people confuse PBM with electrical stimulation devices which tingle. Since PBM is light therapy, you won't feel any stimulation at all. The device does generate some mild heat, but neuropathy patients who have numbness won't feel any warmth at all. Depending on the amount of your sensory loss, you may or may not feel any heat during the treatment session. Okay, FAQ number four. How often should I use my PBM device? Many patients will ask me if they can use their unit more than once a day, how long they should keep it on, or how long they should wait between treatment sessions. These are all great questions. Here's my recommendation for best results. You should use your PBM 20 minutes per day, twice a day. I recommend doing it every day or at least six days per week, and the time of day really doesn't matter. Wait approximately three hours between each session. You can use the device as much as three times per day. However, more than three times per day won't provide any additional benefit. If you have a hectic schedule and you struggle to get two treatments in per day, here's some of my recommendations. If you work at a desk, do the treatment while you're at your desk. If that's not an option, do the treatment once per day. It'll take a little bit longer, but it'll still work. If you have the option, get two devices. It can be a real time saver. Here's a few more helpful tips for your success. Make sure the treatment is applied directly over the skin and not through clothing. Make sure the surface of the skin is clean and free from lotion or pain cream prior to your treatment. Many of the lotions can sensitize the skin and cause a reaction. Lastly, bear in mind that consistency is the key to success. Consistency in everything for you to be successful. This includes using your PBM device, taking your nerve support formula, following a low inflammatory diet, doing your peripheral neuropathy exercises. Just stay consistent and watch the magic as your legs transform. Okay, on to FAQ number five, and probably the most popular question we get. How long will it take before my neuropathy symptoms begin to subside? Well. The short answer is, it depends. And it depends on many factors, such as the severity of your neuropathy. Are you using your PBM device properly? Are you taking a good nerve support formula? Are you on medications that cause or worsen neuropathy? Are you consuming a diet high in processed food? Do you exercise daily? Do you drink alcohol? Do you get enough good quality sleep every night or most nights? Do you have mitochondrial dysfunction? Do you have a medical condition such as diabetes, acid reflux, leaky gut syndrome, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, or high blood pressure? Any of these medical conditions can affect your ability to recover. Do you have a positive attitude about your ability to heal, or have you given up hope? There are so many things that can affect your ability to recover. Sometimes just making one shift, one change can make all the difference in your recovery. We have so many people around the globe that reach out to us for help and guidance. 
So one of the things we've done is we've created a doctor guided neuropathy program. For those of you who are interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, if you follow most of the things I've outlined, you should see a significant improvement within four to six months, which is really good considering that most doctors are still saying peripheral nerves can't be healed and basically sentence you to a life of misery. Well, that's it for now, Health Explorers. That about sums it up. If you have a question or concern that we didn't address in this video, leave us a comment and we'll be sure to answer it in the next video. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral Peripheral. Peripheral. <laughs>